I think we'll be good right here because we're gonna win with Exodia real quick. Are you sure about that? Yes. Yes. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Where's the Exodia pieces? Ah, ah. Triple Heart the Underdog, though. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy The Duelist Link Evolution, and we are on episode 3. And I gotta give a big thank you to every, each, and single one of you guys for giving me some support on episode 1 and 2 for this Let's Play so far. The support has been literally insane, and I just gotta thank you guys so much for that. And yeah, I don't really wanna, like, keep saying thank you throughout every single episode, so I think after episode 3, I'll be done with saying thank you unless something else crazy happens throughout this Let's Play. But yeah, thank you for the support, and let's get into today episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution and in today's episode we're going to be tackling the beginning of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! show. We're done with Varanes. We finished that in you know last episode. If you missed out on last episode be sure to go check that out uh, once I make a playlist and everything like that. Once I put make the playlist I'll put it in the description um, down below where we're going to be beginning the Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, you know journey right now and I know one of you guys in the comments section uh, down below said that you know start up with Arc 5 first because of the new content in this because actually with the original Legacy of the the Duelist game, Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 is actually um, one that is brand new to Legacy of the Duelist, but I kind of just settled on it, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go for Yu-Gi-Oh! And then we're going to go Yu-Gi-Oh! GX 5D Zexal Arc 5 and kind of go in that route. It's just that Varane's barely had any content, so I might as well start off with that first anyways. So if you guys are excited for today's episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution, as always, be sure to go hit that like button on the video down below and subscribe for more content related to Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution, and let's get into today's episode. So we're going to be starting off in the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The original series and let's get into it. And as you guys can see, we are going to be starting in the Duelist Kingdom and we're going to be learning how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters yet again. Now, I know that I went through the Varanes thing all by myself, but I didn't really think I knew what I was doing throughout the whole thing. So let's just go through Duelist Kingdom and learn how to do this properly. And as you guys can see, we have the robot right here. So what I'm going to do for this series and throughout the series is that I want to use my voice changer that I have hooked up. For this let's play i mentioned this in episode one and two but we're finally in the like actual story section of this game so i'm going to be using a robot voice for this guy right here so i'm going to go to click on my robot voice right here and prepare yourselves for the weird robot voice loading Yu-Gi-Oh histories the story of Yu-Gi-Moto begins in Domino High School, where Duel Monsters, the hottest card game around, was all the rage. Yu-Gi-Oh was the best duelist around, and his Joe, friend Joey wanted desperately to learn how to duel as well. So our history of Yu-Gi-Moto starts with Yu-Gi teaching the rules of Duel Monsters to Joey and, and as their friends Taya and Tristan watch. Now, I think for the for this section, though, I don't think we're going to give any special voices to the rest of these guys in this section. But after we finish the tutorial, I want to give uh, meme voices to uh, Yu-Gi and Kaiba. Not Yu-Gi-Moto, like straight up Yami Yu-Gi. Hey, Jerry, Joey, Earth the Joey, it's your turn. Hmm. Tristan, ah, isn't he cute when he's thinking? Hey, Tristan, Yugi's here teaching me how to play dual monsters. Drooling monsters? Dual monsters, you Nimrod. They've been at it for hours. Joey's starting to get the hang of the game, but Yugi's like an expert. Okay, Yugi, it's time to duel. And that was pretty quick, but that's because we're doing a tutorial right now. I already knew this because... Um, if you guys didn't know already, this is my just Let's Play account right now. I actually went through this tutorial on my main account already. I'm trying to get all the cards on my main account for other content besides this Let's Play. And also, I'm not going to use the robot voice on this section right here because there's just no need to. But yeah, wow, what a string of uh, intro. Uh, and if N8 can sure spin a tail. Greeting Duelist, I am NN4, M8, part of the virtual game simulator, and I've been programmed to teach you proper dueling rules and the best practices. Uh, so let's get started and walk you through the basics. In this scenario, we'll be taking on the role of the legendary Yugi Moto, basing off the against the not so quite legendary Joey Wheeler. I don't know why they're trashing on our boy Joey Wheeler. He's the most legendary duelist around. Anyways, so we're gonna open up with this broken hand right here. We have two dragon dwelling in the cave. What an overpowered hand. Very broken. First, let's learn how to summon a monster. Monsters are summoned into the monster zone. Monsters can be summoned in attack position or set in the monster zone in defense position. A monster in attack position is placed vertically and a monster in defense position is placed horizontally and face down. Let's uh, let's set a monster. Select the dragon dwelling in the cave and set it into the field in defense position. Very epic right here. These are some 900 IQ plays. Nothing compared to the Varane's tutorial. The Varane's tutorial, garbage. This tutorial though, top tier. These are what I call the best plays around. We're going to go end our turn real quick, and we're going to see Joey Wheeler make some of the highest IQ plays. Highest IQ plays. We're going to go for Blazing Apache, which is honestly pretty decent for this time. Joey out here with some broken cards. And by the way, the Blazing Apache is a UR card in Duel Link, so you can definitely tell that Joey's using the most broken cards around. That is for sure. 
Congratulations, you survived. You might have noticed that Joey attacked you and wound up hurting himself. Let me explain what happened. When a monster attacks a defense position monster, the attacker's attack value is compared to the defender's defense value. If the attacking monster has a lower value, the attacker's owner takes damage equal to the difference. If the attacking monster has a greater value, the defending monster is destroyed. Next, we'll play the spell and trap card. These cards are played in the spell and trap card zone. Green spell cards can be played right away, but most can only be played in your main phase one or main phase two. You can also set it and activate it at a later time. Yeah, they're talking about quick play spells. Quick play spells can be used pretty much whenever point, but they didn't specify this yet. Pink trap cards can be activated on your turn and during your opponent's turn, but you must first set them down on the field first. You cannot activate a trap card the same time you set it, but you can activate it anytime after the start of the opponent's turn. Let's go set down Call of the Haunted. Now we're going to be switching the Dragon Qu dragon Dwelling in a Cave in attack position, and then we're going to be summoning the Nankendo. Because these boys are going to get a boost from Banner of Courage. So we're going to use that. We're going to attack with the Nenken Dog. It's going to get over Blazing Apache because he now has 2,000 attack points. And then our Dragon Dwelling Cave is going to use its spicy 15 hundo attack Joey directly. Very spicy. Now let's end our turn. Very insane high IQ plays. Like, these are the biggest high IQ plays I've seen around. Let's be real here. Except Joey's going to set a card because he got nothing better to do. And then we're going to do a turn change. Rush Relentlessly. Very spicy. Now we're going to be able to do a Tribute Summon, so we're going to sacrifice our Dragon Dwelling in the Cave. Or no, we're going to sacrifice our Dog for some reason. Actually, I think I remember why. We're going to sacrifice uh, our Dog for Gravity Crush Dragon, and if we read his effect, we're going to be activating Gravity Crush Dragon's effect. We're going to send Banner Courage to the Graveyard, and then due to that, we're going to be able to destroy Joey's card. Next up, we're going to be activating a Chain, and we're going to be going for Call of the Haunted. The Special Summon our Yen Ken Dog back from the Graveyard. And then we're going to follow up with the Rush Relentlessly, and I forget which we're going to give it to. That's a Gravity Crush Dragon. I guess we'll give it to Gravity Crush Dragon, because this guy needs to get over 3k attack. I think at this point, the tutorial doesn't really matter, because we're just going to direct attack with all these monsters anyways. Now we're ready to attack. Going to go for the attack, and then we're just going to go left to right. Boom, bada bang, there we go. 18 hundo. 13 hundo. And then last but not least, we have a spicy 3100, which is exactly enough life points to take out Joey. It's like this was a tutorial or something. Nice. What? A card that powerful totally wipes me out. Whoa, you stink at this game, Joey. You did fine, Joey. I just have better cards. My grandpa owns a game shot and I get all my best cards from him. Your own game shot? What are we waiting for? Let's go. Okay, maybe I can even get my grandpa to show us his super rare card he got. Little did they know that someone was listening into their conversation. Someone who was looking for a very rare card to add it to his collection. Uh-oh, Kaiba! No, we got a new campaign duel. Card of the cards, Joey Wheeler, Monster Raider, broken card. Dude, we got his signature card, Axe Raider. That's what I meant. That card is broken. Oh my goodness. And now we're going to be getting the heart of the cards and we're going to be officially beginning this series right here. That afternoon, Yugi and his friends went to Grandpa's game shop. Yugi wanted to show his friends his Grandpa's prize collection. Gramps, could you show my friends your awesome super rare card? Rare card? You mean my special card? Please, please. Haha, <laughs> how can I refuse? You kids are in for a treat, so don't take this out card too often. Ready? Here it is. The Blue Eyes White Dragon. So powerful, so rare, so powerful, I never let it leave my hands. This card is priceless and there's only four of them in the world. Suddenly, a classmate from school ran into the shop. His name was Seto Kaiba, the young CEO of Kaiba Corp, and he has found the card he was looking for. Man, what voice do I gotta give Kaiba? Because I wanted to give him a meme voice, and I don't hate Kaiba by any means, but I think it would be funny to do a voice for Kaiba that's, like, unrelated to him at all. So I'm gonna turn on my headset so I can hear what I'm saying. Name the price. Nah, we're not gonna give that. What about this one? Nope. What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? Yeah, we're gonna do this one. Name your price for blue eyes. I'll pay anything you ask. I'm sure you could, but this card is worth more than anything you can ever offer. Sinai, old fool. Kaiba stormed out of Grandpa's store. The team was disturbed by Kaiba's obsession with Blue-Eyes White Dragon. The next day, Yugi came back to the store with his friends, and he found Grandpa was gone. When his phone rang, it was Kaiba on the other hand, mocking Yugi that he kidnapped his grandpa, grandfather and took him to Taiba Kaiba Corp. Yugi and his friends rushed to the Kaiba Corp and found Grandpa laying on the floor defeated. God, Grandpa, are you okay? Yugi, I failed. I wanted to teach that boy Kaiba a lesson about the heart of the cards, but I lost. Grandpa? 
How's the old man feeling, Hong? Kaiba, you sleaze, what have you done to him? We had a duel, that's all, with each putting up her most valuable card as his prize, but I guess playing against a champion like myself was just too much stimulation for the old fool. Kaiba, you should be ashamed of yourself! Look at the sweet prize I won! Grandpa, or Kaiba, held up a Grandpa's Blue Eyes White Dragon and ripped it in half. Grandpa's most treasured card! Blue Eyes White Dragon is a rare and powerful card, and this one will never be used against me. Blue Eyes White Dragon, my treasure! Grandpa, hold on! How could you do such a thing? Yugi, take this! Huh, Grandpa? I built this deck, I put my soul into these cards, and I taught you everything I know, Yugi. Take my cards and teach Kaiba respect for the heart of the cards. Okay, Grandpa, I'll do it. You ready to play, Runt? Playtime is over, Kaiba. Huh? Kaiba was taken aback by Yugi's sudden transformation. It seemed like he had become a different person, as he feels more confident and powerful than before. Kaiba! Actually, we should do a different voice for this one. Kaiba, prepare yourself because it's time to duel! Now, that was some spicy stuff, but the thing is, I didn't hear anything that I've said in that situation. So, post-editing, I'm either going to hate myself for what I did right there, or I'm going to find it funny and everybody's going to find it cringy. cringy. Probably both. Anyways, though, we're going to be using this story deck in this duel, specifically because we can pull off the Exodia combo right here, because that's what we're playing. This deck is built to win with Exodia, but... That makes sense considering the fact that, well, this is paying tribute to the original show. And as you guys know from episode one of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, Yu-Gi activated that boy, Exodia. Now, what do I want to go for? Because I kind of, if I'm going to pop off with Exodia, I do want to get a board up where I can tribute someone into Dark Magician and kind of go ham from there. So I think I'm going to go for Mystical Elf and pass turn. Hopefully I can top deck into like a trap card or something to protect myself. Because I could sacrifice off Sand Gan with Dark Magician and then search out for... Never mind. This boy just summoned freaking Blue Eyes White Dragon right here. And as you guys can see, we have this awesome animation for Blue Eyes White Dragon. To be honest, so the Duel Links uh, animation is way better than that one. But, well, that ruins all of my plans right there. Where this Seto Kaiba guy just literally instantly summons into Blue Eyes White Dragon. Mystical Elf? GG. That, that's a new right there. We need a top deck to like Swords of Revealing Light. Or something like that, because this man, madman, Kaiba, literally turned up. <gasps> Bro, we just got Swords of Feeling Light. Okay, I'll take, I'll take it. Um, let's go set a Sand Dogan, and then activate Swords of Feeling Light. So now what we need to do is then hopefully top deck into a card later to hopefully get um at least enough attack points to get rid of uh, your boy Blue Eyes White Dragon. Okay, Kaiba's just gonna end his turn. That's all right. We're gonna go draw into a card, man. We're not getting anything good. We we need to like top deck into probably Heart of the Underdog. That's also a good card to top deck into. Hopefully things will go smoothly, because if they don't, we're gonna get oofed up. Seto face down no. End of ways. So what's a revealing light is turn two. Oh, well, we got another one to follow up. That's good. So, what I'm going to do is that we're going to actually tribute off for a Dark Magician. Let's get another summoning animation going on in today's episode. We're going to be seeing so much awesome stuff in today's episode. We see Dark Magician's animation, which I do find, I like this one better than uh, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. But still, Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon could have been better. Honestly, my favorite one so far is legit Bendy Code Talker. Uh, do we want to go for the other sand can? Nah, let's go for the actual Forbidden one. The Exodia, the Forbidden one. Let's go for that guy. And then pass turn. Because then soon on Kaiba's end phase, Swords of Feeling Light. Oh, I forgot to attack. I wasn't paying attention. Should have attacked to Raya Shin. That's an oof right there. Oh, well. Could be worse. Could be in the worst situation. Come on. We need to top deck into something to get over that stinky blue eyes white dragon. That is not it. Definitely not it at all. But for now, we're going to summon it to the god card himself, Beaver Warrior. This card's broken. I'm telling you guys. Beaver Warrior, like, needs to get banned. I can't believe you can use three of it in the uh, ban list. Give the Mystical Elf. Could be worse. Could be a freaking Mirror Force of all things. I forget when they, uh, I forgot when Mirror Force was first played in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! show. Because that's another one of the iconic cards, um, from the game. So let's go into that. Let's activate our Swords Revealing Light yet again. You can't beat us, Kaibo. We got so many swords. Come on, I just want to win with Exodia. That would be amazing to do in today's episode. If we fail with Exodia the first time, I'm probably just going to have to use, like, a story deck or something. If it doesn't work out. Come on. We gotta get, we gotta top deck into some magicalness right here. Monster Reborn's good. Uh, not what we needed, but good. Let's go set, uh, Griffor a face down. Switch Beaver Warrior into defense position. And then go into attack and go for a Dark Magician. 
And then we're gonna get rid of the Hisamami Giants and go from there. I'm just waiting until Kaiba does some ridiculous BS. Or I can't wait till we do some ridiculous BS and top deck into like a good card to really get things going. Because we are one turn away from Swords of Revealing Light to be finished for. Uh, activate this card by targeting a monster. Oh, okay, you know what? Spellbinding Circle is going to help us out to win with Exodia. Skyba, I'm sorry that I'm cheesing you real hard, but I got I got a win with Exodia for the viewers and for the iconic moment from the show. We're just playing the anime, dude. I know that definitely, though, later on this series, once the duels get uh, more difficult, what's most likely going to happen is I'm going to start getting uh, tired of the BS in the game and play my own decks. And actually, now thinking about it, um, after this episode is done, I want to open up some more Playmaker packs because I want to pull Clock First. What was it? It's like Clock Cyverse Dragon or something like that. I want to draw into that guy. That'd be pretty cool. Um, let's go set to a Giant Soldier of Stone. But yeah, so uh, recently, so in my main uh, account on this game, I've been playing a Cybers like Clock Dragon deck, and that's been a ton of fun. That card is actually really cool. It's like you need Clock Wyvern plus one or more Link monsters, and then for each fusion material that you use to some. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, our Spellbinding Circle just got yeeted upon. That is not good. That was our only hope to stop Blue Eyes White Dragon. Oof. I actually should have known that too, because I went against this. Um, I went against Seto Kaiba yesterday because I was trying to get some summoning animations for you guys. At some point um, in this game, I want to um, do a whole video on every single summoning animation in Legacy of the Duel Link Evolution. And that's going to take a long time, but I've been trying to get all of them in this uh, game. So that's been fun. Uh, I do want to summon Summon Skull, but one, there's no summoning animation for it. And two, it's not going to be useful against this freaking Blue Eyes White Dragon. That's for sure. Anyways, back to my, like, the deck I was using in my main deck. Yeah, I've been using Clockburst Cyber Dragon, or Cyberus Dragon. It's a really cool monster, because it gains a thousand attack points for each fusion material that you use, and it's really sick. So I think at some point I want to recreate that, my budget deck, with the cards that I have lying around in this Let's Play, but we'll see what happens. It really depends on if we pull what we need to pull. Jeez, man. You're not getting anything good. We haven't even top deck to an Exodia piece. At the same time, though... When it comes to Exodia, it's actually kind of bad for getting it to the Exodia pieces, only because of the fact that like you want to get the uh, you want to get draw cards instead of Exodia. Like if you top deck into a, one Exodia piece, it's like what do you do? You just sit there with that one Exodia piece and you can't win. So there is that right there. Oh my God, how many gifts of the magical elf do you got, Kaiba? Kaiba, you need to stop these shenanigans, Kaiba. Turn no change. So our summon school is going to get yeeted upon. Is he going to summon like another battle ox? No, he's going to go for a tribute summon into what? Judge it, old man. That's not good. So we're going to be losing both monsters right here. I would rather say my monster reborn to yeet his blue eyes white dragon if we can take it out. But I don't think that's happening. You want hardly underdog or a card to get rid of these two guys. Come on. Jesus, Konami. Why are you being so rude to me? Well... I guess if we want to keep stalling, we're going to need to... Actually, you know what? Let's actually use my brain a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, Let's go summon Sangan. Let's just go do that. We're going to summon him in defense position. Okay, Grud Kaiser is not a high level at all. So we're just going to set Giant Soldier to the stone and hope for the best. My original plan was to summon like Summon Skull and get rid of Judge Man, which is probably the better place still. But I'd rather thin out my deck for some other Exodia pieces if we're going to have a chance to win. Because, like, I, I beat Kaiba the first time with a uh, deck like this. I just forgot what card I used to uh, get rid of his Blue Eyes White Dragon. Anyways, we got to get the right arm of the Forbidden One. Because, you know, got to be... we got That's just the right one. It's just the right one that we need. Uh, right there. Giant Soldier Stone, we got yeeted upon. Big oof. And he's going to set a face down and pass turn. Come on. Right arm of the Forbidden One, guide me. That's... No. That's not good. Not good at all. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win this one. We are running out of resources. And the worst part is, like, the turn that we do not want to draw into Heart of the Underdog, we're going to draw into it. And that is coming soon. I feel like we're about to lose very heavily here. We need it. You know what would be clutch? If we got a Pot of Greed and drew into our last two pieces of Exodia. That'd be sick. That would actually be literally insane. I just don't think that would happen. Let's go send another card. Come on, top deck gets a Pot of Greed. Heart of the Cards guide me. That is no. 
Yeah, no. Yeah, we lose. He's gonna attack with Judgment first and then win. That's a feels bad. I do okay. I wanna do like one more attempt. I want I wanna do one more attempt with this deck to try to win the Exodia. I know I said at the start of this duel, if we don't win with Exodia, I was gonna switch to just a preset deck or just a deck that I have in this. But you know what? We're gonna try it one more time, okay? I, I have a little bit of confidence. I have a little bit of confidence. Yo, Spear Kribo, what's up, my guy? It's actually cool to see, especially because that's a very iconic Duel Links card. Okay, Kaiba. Are you going to let us go second? Because maybe we should have went second so we had more draw to go to. Oh, he did. What a nice guy. Yo, Kaiba, what a nice guy. Appreciate it, Kaiba. Whoa, I was about to... Yo, this is go good and bad. This is good and bad. Oh, that's how I killed Blue, Blue as White Dragon the first time. I had Dark Hole. That makes a lot more sense now. That actually, that actually makes a lot more sense now. Look at all these Exodia pieces we drew into. What the heck? Are we about to win this, dude? Anyways, we're gonna go into Silver Fang. Normal summon him in attack position. And we're gonna go swing. Swing into action. Okay. Hey, you know what? Shadow Spell on, you know, a Silver Fang? It could be worse, man. It could have been, like, on a Dark Magician or something. So, you know, I'm fine with that. You waste your resources, Kaiba. You waste them, my dude. Wow, he's passing turn. This mad lad. Do I take damage, though? I do not take that. Hey, yo, we about to win with Exodia, my guys. Oh, baby. And we can't switch. Okay, so we can't switch the battle position of that. Yo, we about to win with Exodia. Believe in the heart of the cards the second go around, boys and girls. Not the first time, the second time. And noodle phase. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? This is good and bad. What's cool with Double Heart of, Heart of the Underdog is that once we draw into a normal monster, we actually get to draw two cards each time, which is pretty sick. But, uh, yeah, let's let's get into these Exodia pieces. Let's get this dub real quick. Come, come on, Konami! Jeez, man, we're, like, trying into everything but a normal monster. Our deck is, like, stacked with normal monsters, and we're not drawing into it. And Kaiba's throwing the game. He hasn't done a single thing. What? Like, what is going on the second go around? <laughs> what is going on? Where, <laughs> where was Dark Hole at Snatch Steel last duel, Konami? That's the real question in this situation. Where were these broken cards last turn? We have another said card. Okay. Still doesn't summon a monster. What spell and trap card are we going to top deck into this time? Okay, there we go. Hard the underdog time, boy. Yes. And then we want to draw into a normal monster and an Exodia piece? Okay. Yes. Yes. Are the underdog, please. Please work. We're gonna go for this. Miss okay, so then we can go for it again. Ooh. Oh wait, oh so if we draw a single spell card it won't work. Okay. That is interesting. Well I guess for the memes and shenanigans, let's summon the winged dragon guardian of the fortress. Why not? And, uh, how many cards are we going to discard? Because we're going to need to discard a lot of them. You waste your negate attack. You go, Kaiba. You're the number one dual surround, so I understand your big brain plays. And we're all set a Snatch Steel, because I want to keep that. And then we're going to discard three cards. I wasn't, I'm not counting my hand. Oh, just discard a card? Oh, no. Oh, we do. I do what we do. I have to discard three cards. Yep, I called it. Nice. Okay, come on. Next turn, we got this Exodia. Yeah, we were going to get Exodia. Actually, getting in the sand game would be good, too. Um, I think for the meme... Uh, do we do we do it? You know, let's do it. Spellbinding Circle. Get memed on, brother. Get memed on, brother. I'm sorry, Kai, but I had to do it to you like that. I had to do it to them. Oh, snap! Yo, we are close. We are close, my guys. Now, what do I want to do? Well, we're going to switch into our wing in defense position. We'll just we'll set Kribo. Kribo will give us that good luck. Dude, we're so close. Into summoning Exodia. I can't wait. My throat, though, is like dying. Earlier in today, I recorded a whole live stream reading a bunch of cards for a new box that's coming out in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. So my throat has been dying after that stream. But it is whatever. We are powering through this. What we're not powering through is the fact that we're taking 1,700 points of damage. But at the end of the day, I think we'll be good. I think we'll be good right here because we're going to win with Exodia real quick. Yes. 
Yes. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Where's the Exodia pieces? Ah, ah. Triple heart of the underdog, though. Hold up. Um, I kind of want to blow up like every monster real quick. Hmm, what do I do? Well, I, oh, I can't, I guess I can't cancel it. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. But do we have triple the heart of the underdog? So we're going to go for it. And before Kaiba has like, and before Kaiba summons like two blue eyes, white dragons with ancient rules and just wins. Oh, we could have set the giant solar stone. I didn't realize that. Forgot I had him in our hand. Come on. Okay. Is that, is that all you're going to summon? Okay, cool. I was going to have a heart attack if this mad lad literally went with like the best card around. Just summon two blue eyes, white dragons plus a normal monster like that. What is my luck? J I am genuinely concerned. What is my luck? Like, bruh. We have all these freaking cards. Jeez, man. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. And I want to activate a Swords of Revealing Light, but clearly that's not going to happen. Because my back row is full and Spellbinding Circle didn't get, get rid of, which is annoying. Yeah, it is actually really annoying. I should have saved my Snatch Steel then. Well, hopefully Kaiba kills her Snatch, or this is me giant at some point. I think he is. I think Kaiba's going for the big brain plays. We're going to see that uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon animation yet again. I'm going to see this yet again, and you're just going to swing? Okay, cool. Oof. Okay, now that he has his Blue Eyes White Dragon, are we going to go into Exodia? Is that all we needed? Come on. Okay, Triple Heart of the Underdog. Let's go, boys. One Triple, or one Heart of the Underdog. Two! Chain of three right now, boys. If we don't get Exodia this turn, I'm going to be mad. Come on. Come on. What is this game? What is this game? Why can we not get Exodia? Jeez, man. This is this is making me freaking mad, dude. This is getting me mad. <sighs> I just want to summon Exodia. That's all I want to do. And this video is like way longer than episode 1 and 2 because I'm trying to get freaking Exodia. I'm doing it for the viewers. What is this game? Oh my god, and the the worst part is I can't even destroy my own sand gang because my back row's clogged. Why is Spellbinding Circle still here? The monster that I targeted was destroyed. When that monster's destroyed, you get rid of this card. Why didn't Spellbinding Circle get rid of? It makes me mad. You know what, Kaiba? I'm taking this opportunity. If I don't draw into- if I do not draw into my Exodia piece next turn for whatever reason, we're just crashing with sand gang. That's fine. Come on. Or, or you know what? If we don't top attack to Exodia, we're just gonna style on him and tribute off our uh, Sand Gan and go for Summon Skull. We're, we're winning this turn, Kai, but you can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. Oh my god. Oh, we can still do it again? What? How come the other time it didn't work? I wonder why it didn't work. Because I remember like previous times we uh, were drawing cards, we drew into a normal monster. Oh, it must be the last draw that it counts. That's what it must be. So your if your final draw, yeah, if your final draw is not a if, if your final draw is not a normal monster, then you can't activate it again. That makes sense now. Okay. That's cool. I probably should have stopped it so we could have styled on him and summoned it to summon skull. Look at look at all these ways we could go for it. Oh my god. Look at the you know what we're gonna keep going. You know what? The heart of the guards are the hearts of the cards are guiding me, and we're gonna go for it. Imagine our Exodia piece is like our last two cards. I swear. I swear. Is our Exodia piece the last two cards? Nope. We got it, boys. We won with Exodia. As you can see, there's no summoning animation for uh, Exodia, which is strongly and extremely disappointing. You only play for cap power, Kaiba. That's why you lost. But if you had your heart in this game, there's nothing you can do. The results of this duel spread quickly, and the mysterious one-eyed man got news of Yugi's victory. Hmm, seems like Kaiba boy has been defeated in a duel. I must learn more about this Yugi Moto. Very epic right there. So we got some- Oh, we got Pot of Greed! Let's go! You better know I'm playing Pot of Greed in this. So, fun fact with your decks, um, with the decks that you build in this game, you can play any card you want in the single player modes, but in multiplayer, on the other hand, you can do that. And honestly, I don't think we'd be opening up packs in today's episode for considering how long it took me to- 
just get through today's episode. So I'm gonna do um, the pack opening stuff at the beginning of episode four. I think to, I think episode four would be a good episode to start building some decks and trying out decks of my own because I do want to try that Borolo Dragon at some point. So I think we should do that in episode four and everything like that. So that's what we're going to do. So if you're looking forward to today or for the next episode of Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution and you watch to the end of today's episode, be sure to go hit that like button on the video down below and subscribe to the channel for more Legacy of the Duelist content. This was a ton of fun to record. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll go see you guys in the next episode of Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Next episode is going to be spicy because we're going to cheese it up with Pot of Greed. See you guys later. Thank you for watching.